folks, it's me, Ali, and I wanted to share with you a question that came up online about the use of a one-step apexification or the barrier technique using the bioceramic putty. Now, I have described this technique many, many years ago, and I figured this would be a very good application for the use of a material such as the bioceramic putty. So I wanted to reshare it with you again. Um, the original case that I shared was a maxillary anterior tooth that had an open apex, was fairly large, uh, was open past the size 8004 uh, endosequence file. And the question was, how can you obturate this tooth reliably? Of course, now we know that you can, even using the bioceramic sealer, have tried to custom fit a gutta percha cone and be able to basically seal that in there using the one cone that you have. However, many people have shown interest in making sure that they don't have any transition between the gutta percha and the cement, which could potentially be an area of the cement washing, of the sealer washing out when you have such an open apex. In those cases, the use of an apical barrier has been advocated by many people as a, a better way of being able to create an apical seal. From that point on, you can fill the rest of the tooth back up. So the question uh, was, how can we create an apical uh, barrier? Originally, we used the MTA for this, and you basically either put a collar coat at the apical area and place small and incremental layers of, the, uh, of MTA, and then created that barrier and filled the rest of the tooth up. The technique that I described was to custom fit a cone all the way to the full working length and then use a scalpel and cut about three millimeters or so from the tip of that custom fitted cone so that you end up getting a custom fitted plugger. Now, the custom fitted plugger at that point would fit three millimeters short of the apex. At that point, what you would do is you would place a proportional and equal amount of the putty material as the segment of the gutta percha that you cut off and then place that in the canal and use the custom uh, cone that you use to create a custom plugger to push that uh, putty down to the apical area of the tooth. And that way you create an immediate plug of the putty right at the apical area of the tooth. And that is really the essence of the technique that I originally described and is very easy to use. You can then fill the rest of that up either using the same cone with using by ceramic sealer or most of the time when these technique is needed is in generally in pretty straight teeth either an anterior uh, central lateral canine or teeth like that where this kind of a situation occurs and in those cases, frankly, you could just fill the rest of the whole tooth up with the bioceramic sealer without the use of the gutta percha. Of course, if the concern is the need for a retreatment at some point down the line, don't forget that the bioceramic sealer, when it sets, it doesn't set like glossionomer. It sets like desiccated ZOE, so that if you do need to get through it, you can get through it using ultrasonics in, in a straight uh, case. Anyway, uh, once you have it up to the CEJ, you can fill the rest of the tooth up immediately with glossionomer. And then once the glossionomer sets, you can come back and remove a couple of millimeters from the surface of the glossionomer at the cable surface area of the access and bond a composite to that so that you can permanently uh, seal and finish the access. Uh, these cases have very good success rate. The key here is proper uh, disinfection and uh, nice irrigation so that you can eliminate the bacteria from the canal and you'll be able to get very good success rate. Of course, the alternative to doing this technique would be to use revascularization, which is um, an alternative which is available today as well. And in fact, I have done several cases of revascularization using the biceramic putty as the barrier uh, and those I will share with you down the line as well. I have also long-term recalls of those cases. So um, that's pretty much it. I hope this was uh, helpful to you. Just remember that if you do need a one-step barrier in an open apex case, you can use the bioceramic putty in the technique that I described, or alternatively, you can do revascularization, which is an alternative theory which will take a couple of different appointments um, and it's usually primarily done in 
in younger teeth with blunderbuss APCs where the root is thin and you want to actually have root formation. Of course, if this happens in a young tooth where the pulp is vital, you would not be doing either one step uh, barrier or revascularization. You would actually be doing apexigenesis, in which case you try to preserve the vitality of the existing pulp and allow the complete formation of the root to take place. I hope this was clear, the differentiation between one step barrier, apexification procedures, uh, and regeneration, and apexogenesis procedures is something that you can all do with using biceramics but you just have to have the proper diagnosis so you can have the proper treatment plan. Anyway, I hope this information was helpful to you. So from my hotel room here in Las Vegas, Nevada at the Wynn Hotel, I'm Ali Nisse and let's save some teeth.